Hello, my name is Manu Parimi and I'm an Applications Engineer at Plexim. I'd like to welcome you to the Model of the Month video series. In this month's Model of the Month video, I'm going to discuss Microgrid in Island Operation Demo Model. This model has been developed by Dr. Louis Carsis. Please submit your models to info at plexim.com for a chance to have your model displayed. To view Plex Demo Models, go to Window Demo Models. Here, on the left, the demo models are categorized based on Power Electronics area. You could also choose to categorize demo models based on the domains or the Plex version that they're released in. You could search for demo models or for a topic of your interest under the search tab. Please note that to view microgrid demo model, you need Plex 4.1 version or higher. A brief description of this demo model has been provided here along with a few references. To open this model, click on Open this model tab on the top right corner. What is a microgrid? A microgrid is a system approach to view generation and associated loads as a subsystem. The figure here shows an example of a microgrid with a group of radial feeders and four microsources at nodes 8, 11, 16 and 22. There is a single point of connection to the utility called point of common coupling. Some feeders such as feeders A, B and C have sensitive loads which require local generation. The non-critical load feeders, such as feeder D, do not have any local generation. When the microgrid is grid connected, power from the local generation or the microsources here can be directed to feeder D. But during disturbances, the generation and the corresponding sensitive loads can isolate themselves from the grid using the static switch. This approach allows for local control of distributed generation thereby reducing the need for a central dispatch. The Plex microgrid demo model illustrates three active generators, their associated controls and a load. This microgrid model is managed through both local and centralized supervisory controls. A key element in the control design of a microgrid is that communication among the microsources is unnecessary for basic microgrid operation. Therefore, the local control of the inverters is achieved using droop method. An advantage of the droop method is its simplicity because no extra interconnections among the inverters are required. The active generators here are modeled using averaged inverter blocks because inverters can provide the control and flexibility required for a microgrid operation. The three inverters have three different volt ampere ratings of 1 MVA, 500 KVA and 200 KVA. The average configuration of the inverters is modeled using a masked subsystem. To open the subsystem, right click on the inverter block and go to subsystem and select look under mask. Instead, you could also use keyboard shortcuts command and U for Mac or control and U for Windows. Supervisory controller is used to dynamically determine frequency and voltage references. This control changes the open loop reference very slowly such that at point of common coupling or PCC, the voltage and frequency are maintained at close to reference values. The droop control for a standalone microgrid is based on mimicking the operation of a synchronous generator. In synchronous generators, when the extracted electrical active power is greater than the input mechanical power, the generator slows down because energy is being extracted from its rotating inertia. This causes the frequency to decrease. Since frequency is a global parameter, that is, it's equal in the entire system and is directly linked to the speed of the generators, each generator unit measures and droops its speed to reduce its input mechanical power. This results in accurate power sharing among different generators. 
A similar approach of real power, frequency and reactive power voltage group control is used here. Since converter based microgrids generally lack inertia, the group method in microgrids is usually based on transmission line characteristics. Frequency f is drooped as a function of real power p. At the same time, the amplitude of the voltage v is drooped with the measured reactive power q. The droops are coordinated to ensure each parallel inverter unit supplies active and reactive power in proportion to its rating while sharing the load. Let's start the simulation now. Note that both the droop and supervisory controllers are not enabled at the beginning of the simulation. The droop controller is enabled at 1 second and the supervisory controller is enabled 10 seconds after the simulation starts. Let's observe the reference voltage and frequency waveforms as seen by the droop controller as well as the waveforms of per unit real and reactive powers. The unit with 200 kVA rating is close to overload at the beginning of the simulation when both the controllers are off. At 1 second when the droop control is enabled, the per unit values of real and reactive power become equal in all the three inverters. However, the reference voltage and frequency values change. At 10 seconds, when the supervisory controller is enabled, they are brought back to their correct values. The active and reactive power measurements in per units and SI units are also displayed here on the left using Plex display blocks. This concludes the tutorial video on microgrid in island operation demo model. For more videos and further information, please visit our website www.plexim.com. Thanks for watching.